welcome to Firebase release notes for June, where we cover recent big and small releases from Firebase. Now, we have seven topics today, so let's dig in right away. Firebase Cloud Messaging delivers millions of messages per second to billions of app installs around the world. And when you're dealing with these numbers, even small changes can have big consequences. Last year, we announced that we deprecated the legacy API for sending messages in favor of the V1 API that we introduced all the way back in 2017. Well, that legacy API is now finally being sunset. If you're still using the legacy API to send messages, you will start seeing more error responses going forward. To prevent your users from missing messages, complete your migration to the V1 API as soon as possible by updating the endpoint that you call to send a message, updating the authorization of your requests to the new forms, and updating the payload of the request to the new format. See all about this in the documentation that I linked. On recent versions of Android and Google Play services, some notifications can now be displayed without even starting the app. This applies to notifications that are sent through the HTTP v1 API, and those may be delegated to Google Play services, which may then display them even when the app is not started. See the documentation on notification delegation with Google Play services that are linked to learn about how to opt out, how delegation affects reporting, and more. Last month at I.O., we announced that Firebase Remote Config now has native support for rolling out features and then rolling them back quickly. Around that time, we also launched the ability to use Remote Config in server-side environments. This lets you dynamically manage the behavior and configuration of server-side applications using Remote Config, including serverless implementations like Cloud Functions and Cloud Run. You get back the complete Remote Config template from the API without any personalizations and with only percent rules applied. This allows for all kinds of use cases, so check the documentation that I linked for full details. Last month, we introduced new Firebase SDKs for calling Vertex AI directly from within your app. And on the Apple side, those SDKs now also have community support for tvOS and VisionOS. And in the Flutter SDKs for Vertex AI and Firebase, we've also been making rapid improvements by adding more named constructors, fixing the count tokens property, tracking usage metadata, and more. So check the Bill of Materials versions 1.1, 2.0, and 2.1 of our Firebase SDKs for Flutter for full details on what has changed. I've been telling you in the past months about how we've been making the Firebase SDKs for Flutter compatible with JS Interop in preparation for the full WASM support that was coming to Flutter Web. Well, at Google I.O., the Flutter team announced Flutter version 3.22, which brings that WebAssembly support to the stable channel and delivers two to three times faster rendering for graphics-intensive web apps. The device streaming feature in Android Studio is a great way to test your app on advanced Android devices in our labs. The feature is powered by Firebase Test Lab, and I've been giving you updates about it here on the channel. Now that device streaming is out of the preview phase, it will become a paid feature with a free-to-use tier. Until early 2025, that means that you can use device streaming for up to 120 minutes per month at no cost. See the link in the description for more details. Those were all the updates we have for today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank or Puff, and I'll see you somewhere down the line.